morning. Good morning. It is good to be with you as we gather in God's house to worship Him. The Sunday after Easter is uh, sometimes called Low Sunday because you know you have all those people gathered together for worship on Easter, and then the next Sunday there's not as many, and so you feel a little low. But the way to combat that is also to celebrate uh, Holy Humor Sunday, which is the uh, fact that. Um, uh, on Easter, God gets the last laugh on Satan and sin and death. And so today we are going to have some humorous uh, anecdotes. I uh, invite you to share uh, jokes that you might have brought along, and I'll share a few. Um, before we do that, I want to draw your attention to a lot of the announcements we have in our bulletin. The youth group uh, says thank you very much to everyone who provided goods for the uh, Fri Good Friday flour and bake sale and the Easter breakfast. Uh, they did a wonderful job and it couldn't have been done without you. Today is dress down day and this quarter Stu Bear is collecting for the local emergency services. So please uh, give to uh, Stu Bear's jar uh, $1 a week if you're able and $2 on dress down uh, Sunday. Please stay after worship and join us for food and fellowship. Um, the youth group is meeting at noon today over at Trinity to plan for next week's M&M's meeting. There's an Easter cantata down at Thompson Town United Methodist Church at 7. Tomorrow is our first senior luncheon, and we're going to pass around a sign-up sheet for that. And... Probably ought to just give these to you. You want to like break them up half and half? All right. So we have a sign-up sheet to help put up uh, pancake breakfast posters. That's coming up pretty soon. Uh, we have the sign-up sheet for the senior luncheon. If you know that you're going to be here, uh, mark your name down. Let us know if you're coming to eat or if you're coming to uh, help serve. Yes. I have the uh, sign-up sheet for that. So I'll put that on there in case anybody forgot what they signed up for. Okay. And I also so could use a, a cake. Now I asked for crumb cakes. I don't know if I scared people off because nobody signed up to make a crumb cake or not. But I just wanted a cake without icing, that kind of thing. But. Okay. All right. So um, Sue has a sign-up sheet there. If you signed up to bring to donate some of the uh, goods we're cooking tomorrow, then you can double-check on that list. We do need somebody to donate a cake, and um, if it doesn't have to be a crumb cake, preferably a cake without icing, but um, if you can help with that, please sign up. Here are posters for the salad bar, which is coming up at the end of the month. If you are willing to take some out and post them around town, uh, write down your name and where you'll post them so we don't duplicate efforts. And then uh, next Sunday afternoon, uh, there is a soup sale benefiting the youth who are going to the uh, National Youth Conference. Some of you have signed up for soups that you want to buy, uh, and that's great. Thank you to those who uh, agreed to donate the ingredients for the potato soup, or potato chowder, that Dana's going to be making. Uh, if you'd like to donate any other kinds of soup, uh, you can write your name down on the second sheet, and what type of soup, and the number of quarts. This part of the jokes. So lot, lots of sign-up sheets going around. There's also a sign-up sheet, yes? Do you, oh, do you have one for the mother-daughter banquet? Yes. <laughs> um, no, it's out there someplace. Okay. I think it might be underneath the... Um, check. Check. Uh, Patty, do you have the clipboard? Yes. Can you check under there and see if there's... No. Okay. <laughs> Some place there's a uh, sign up no, sheet. No, there isn't or no, you can't check? No, I can't check. <laughs> uh, right here it is. It says it's under the, the heading of women's brunch. Okay. Yeah, it's on this red clip. Now, what else is on there? There's more um, than just that. The uh, <laughs> congregational luncheon on Wednesday. Okay. And the, no, Barbara, you already had it. Yeah. <laughs> and the senior luncheon, okay. and what people signed up wow. to bring at the senior luncheon. Okay, so there's one clipboard that has the senior luncheon, the 
and the food for the senior luncheon. Uh, the congregational lunch at the Red of Life on Wednesday, and the uh, women's uh, brunch, Women's Day brunch coming up in, in the beginning of May. So make sure you check all the pages and uh, sign up. Church at the sign up. Yeah. Yes, yes. You're right. Everything is taken. Okay. Don't sign up for anything. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's getting into the spirit a little early here. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can get through some of these others here. Women at church meet Tuesday at 7. Congregational lunch is the Bread of Life is uh, 11.30 on Wednesday. Uh, in your bulletin there are more announcements. Um, everyone is invited to join us uh, Thursday here at Lost Creek at 4 o'clock to pray for our church and community. Members from Trinity will be coming over to join us. And then at 7 o'clock Thursday night, we will have our next uh, installment of the Year of the Bible study. So bring any questions uh, or insights that you have uh, gained, and we'll work them out together. Uh, Saturday is the food packaging event. Out at Brown's United Methodist Church, there is a sign-up sheet on the bulletin board. We still need a couple of volunteers to help get things started, and a couple of volunteers to wrap things up. And we're still looking, I would say, for about 25 volunteers to help package food um, during the day. So if you can sign, if you have not yet signed up, uh, sign up on the bulletin board. Graham? Yes. So, that packaging food thing. Yes. We're just supposed to be there by 10. Right. Just by 10, we don't have to be there earlier. Um, yeah, five minutes earlier or something like that so we can get everybody into their places would be good. Are we going to have to wear something on our head? Um, if if they're, the gloves and, and hair nuts are going to be provided. Okay. So everyone. Um, moving forward, there's the uh, clipboard going around with uh, sign-ups to uh, buy a soup next Saturday. Next Sunday is our Joyful Noise offering. The M&Ms meet next Sunday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Uh, session and trustees, remember we have a joint meeting coming up April 15th, or excuse me, 18th at 7 p.m. Uh, if you were signed up to bake a cake for Meals on Wheels this month, uh, you do not have to. Uh, they are not going to be delivering <coughs> cakes the, the day that uh, we bake for. Um, the, sign uh, the posters are going around for the pancake breakfast. I invite you all to come out for uh, pancakes, 6.45 to 10.45 on Saturday, April 21st over at Trinity. And that's a, you bring a donation, uh, whether it's money or non-perishable foods, uh, whatever donation you make, you can come and eat as many pancakes as you want. There's also some sides provided. Yes. Graham, this year the pancake breakfast will have gluten-free for those who need but it will feature the regular buttermilk pancakes. Okay, so there'll be both buttermilk pancake, pancakes and gluten-free pancakes. Right? Yeah. And then don't forget our spring salad bar coming up. And uh, this month we are collecting items uh, to create care packages for Cody and Cassidy as they get near the end of their semester to sort of encourage them. This month for the food pantry we are collecting paper towels uh, boxes of tissues, band-aids, and ketchup. And also, the fire company is doing one of their fundraisers on May 13th, Mother's Day. Uh, they're serving a meal there, and they were looking for four volunteers to come over and help uh, clean up so that they can, the, all those volunteers who are uh, working at the fire company can eat and uh, relax a little bit. So, uh, Dave Brown has volunteered to help out with the cleanup. Uh, that'd be around one-ish on uh, Mother's Day. Anybody else who can help with that, please let me know. Wow. Any other announcements? Um, I'm going to have, I have two um, basically eight-pound-ish chicken breasts that will need to be cooked for the Thursday night before. Uh, actually cooked and shredded, preferably. 
by the Thursday night before the uh, salad bar, the night before. So if anyone wants to volunteer to do them at home, please feel free to volunteer. We'll be glad to have you do it. Okay. And um, I'm going to start making those calls tomorrow. Don't all come back here and tell me what you're going to bring because I won't write it down and I won't remember. <laughs> so I'll start making phone calls tomorrow and get you all by Thursday probably. And uh, we, of course, we need men to run around back there and act like waitresses. Okay. <laughs> all right. So um, if we need two volunteers to cook chicken breasts and shred them uh, for, for making the chicken salad, if you can do that, talk to uh, Tom, and uh, Tom will start calling people and asking you to volunteer to make a salad for our salad bar. Or one over, overly motivated cook or will do the work. So. That's true. One person could cook both turkey breasts if they wanted to, or chicken breasts, or whatever it is. All right, any other announcements? Let us worship God. The true light, which enlightens everyone, has come into the world. To, to all who receive him, who believe in his name, he gives the power to become children of God. Now, I sort of messed up my order of things here. And I wanted to uh, start off the service with some jokes. Um, Walter just got us uh, started there. I thought I would share this story because I thought it was kind of cute. We just celebrated Palm Sunday where we waved our palm branches. And uh, there's a guy standing there in a cheerleader's costume with pom-poms, and she said, or he says, uh, Jacob the Stutter told me that it was pom-pom Sunday. <laughs> so, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Very good. Oh, yes, are we going to um, have different people do that, or are you going to do that for us? Well, we can pass it around. I bet you the boys would like doing that. Um, Barbara brought her stump fiddle with us. And it is one of those devices that has multiple uh, instruments on it. And one way you can uh, use it is just bounce it on the fl on the ground. But you can also honk a horn or ring a bell or strum. Yeah, there you go. So every time somebody tells a joke, at the end of the joke, you guys get to make one of those noises. Does that sound good? It's an antique. Be careful. Yeah. <laughs> Don't hit your brother with it. Yeah. And then um, I wanted to share this one. Um, in our days of regulations, Jesus is uh, offering the, uh, the feeding of the 5,000 with bread and fish, and one of the uh, crowd says, I can't eat that, I'm a vegan. And another one says, has that fish been tested for mercury? And another one asks, is that bread gluten-free? <laughs> so um, my life might have been a little more difficult if Jesus had been feeding the 5,000 a day. Does anybody else have a joke that they'd like to share? Yes. Oh, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You wrote up some special jokes for today, didn't you? I, I want you to hold on to those. So you're, you get, a, get to come up here for the time with the young people and do it. There you go, very good, okay. So can you hold on to those jokes or do you want to tell one of them now? Tell one now, okay. Why did God create man before woman? Why did God create man before woman? Why? Because he didn't want any advice on how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Very good. Okay. Uh, other jokes? Anybody else want to share a joke? 
I'll do one. Okay. Okay. Billy Graham goes to this place to have one of his services, you know, his big auditorium, you know, and he's preaching to thousands of people. And he's staying in a hotel there. So he gets the limo service, and they're going to take him to the auditorium to do his service. So he comes out, and he's up in his 80s by now, and he says, hey, he says, I have never in my whole life driven one of these limos. I would really love to drive this limousine. So the guy says, well, you're the Reverend Billy Graham. I guess it would be all right. You're trustworthy. Okay, you go ahead and drive. And Billy says, okay, you get in the back. I'll drive. So they take off for the auditorium. And Billy's going down the road 90 miles an hour. The cop pulls him over for speeding. And the cop goes up and he sees who's driving the limo. And he goes back to his car. He says, just, just, Reverend Graham, just wait a minute, sir. Wait a minute. So he goes back to his car and he calls his chief of police. And he says to the chief of police, he says, I know that whenever we have big time celebrities, we let them go. We don't, you know, we don't charge them. We just give them a warning and let them off. And he said, I wanted to get your approval whether I should let this guy off or not. And the guy goes, is it a really big guy? And he said, oh, yeah, it's a really big guy. <laughs> and the chief of police said, is it the governor? And the officer said, no, it's not the governor. It's bigger than that. And the chief of police says, my gosh, she said, is it the president? And the chief of police said, no, it's bigger than the president. The chief of police, he's totally stumped. And he said, well, who the heck do you have in this limousine? And the officer said, I believe it must be Jesus Christ himself, because he's got Billy Graham for a chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on to your jokes. Uh, we'll, we'll get to share some more over here in just a little bit. It wasn't mine. I played your uh, If you would, first uh, turn in your bulletins to our call to worship and let us uh, join together. We believe in God who made us in his image. We live, we love, we laugh because we are like him. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, our Lord and Savior. He had the last laugh on the devil when he rose from the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, co-equal and co-eternal with the Father and the Son. The Spirit is our counselor, our guide, our motivator. He is our joy. Forgive us, Lord, when we take ourselves too seriously. Forgive us when we don't claim the happiness that is rightfully ours as your children. When we forget that you will have the last laugh in this world. O oh God, restore to us the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand. The peace of Christ be with you. Also with you. I share God's peace with one another.
18 to 29. Listen now to the word of the Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where, where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed it on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive their sin, the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, and see, it, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The Lord always blesses the reading and the hearing of his holy word. I invite our young people to come up. If you would think of a piece of a, a pie that is divided into three pieces, um, now, it can be any uh, flavor pie that you want. Uh, I happen to like uh, chocolate cream pie, and so therefore uh, I will be uh, showing you pictures of chocolate cream pie. Uh, but our first piece of the story is the frightened disciples. Uh, we are told in the Gospel of John, the doors of the house where, where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews. Uh, this story in uh, John's Gospel takes place on the evening of the resurrection of Jesus. Now, in John's Gospel, the disciples have not yet seen Jesus. Peter and the beloved disciple have seen the empty tomb. Mary Magdalene has uh, seen Jesus. But the disciples themselves have not. And they are gathered together in a room, and the doors are locked. They are hiding for fear of the Jews, the <laughs> Jewish authorities. They are afraid that the, the authorities who had arrested and killed Jesus might be looking for them, might arrest them, persecute them, kill them. They are also afraid that uh, maybe the Jewish authorities will blame them for trying to steal Jesus' body, the tomb is empty after all, and might uh, arrest them for that. So they are hiding out. They are afraid of what might happen next. And then Jesus appears in the room to them. Now, he has a physical body, but clearly this resurrected body is different from our bodies because he doesn't uh, have to unlock the door and come into the room. He just appears in their midst, yet he still bears the marks of his crucifixion. <coughs> so it's a physical body. It's one that they can touch. It bears the marks of what he's been through, but it's clearly different. It's his resurrected body, it's his eternal body. And he stands there to, with them and he says, peace be with you. He wants them to know that they don't have to be afraid. They don't have to fear the future. God has overcome the powers of sin and death by raising Jesus from the dead. And that same power will be at work in their lives. And sometimes it will be in their work, at work in their lives by God protecting them from these bad things that they are afraid of. But even when bad things do happen to them, they don't have to be afraid. That power of God is greater than any power on earth. And God will hold fast to us. And ultimately, God will give us eternal life with Him. So the disciples do not even have to be afraid of being arrested, of being persecuted, or even of being executed. God is greater than all of that. Jesus gives them peace by reminding them of the power of God at work and His resurrection is now at work in their lives. Now that's the uh, first piece of the story, uh, but there is a second piece of the story, and that's Forrest Gump. Um, kind of, sort of. Uh, in the Gospel of Matthew, 
when Jesus is about to head toward Jerusalem, he meets with his disciples first, and he says, what do, who do people say that I am? And then he says to them, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus says, you are blessed because God has revealed that to you. And you are the rock upon, the, upon which the church will be built, and you will be given the keys to heaven. Ever since Jesus said that to uh, Peter in the Gospel of Matthew, we have imagined that when we get to heaven, we will get to the pearly gates, and those gates will be guarded by St. Peter. And that St. Peter will decide whether or not you are allowed to come in. And so we've come up with all sorts of ways of uh, imagining what that would be like. Uh, and uh, even Forrest Gump had to encounter Peter at the pearly gates. Uh, the day finally arrived, Forrest Gump died and went to heaven. He's at the pearly gates and he's met by St. Peter himself. However, the gates are closed and Forrest as Forrest approaches the gatekeeper. St. Peter says, well, Forrest, it's certainly good to see you. We have heard a lot about you. I must tell you, though, that the place is filling up fast, and we've had to begin administering an, an, an entrance examination for everyone. The test is short, but you have to pass it before you can get into heaven. And Forrest responds, it sure is good to see you here, uh, St. Peter, sir, but nobody ever told me about uh, any entrance exam. Sure hope that this test ain't that too hard. Life has been a big enough test for me as it is. St. Peter goes on, yes, I know Forrest, but the test only has three questions. The first is, what two days of the week begin with the letter T? The second is, how many seconds are there in a year? And the third is, what is God's first name? So Forrest leaves to think over the questions, and he returns the next day to see St. Peter, and, he wait, and Peter waves him up and says, now that you've had a chance to think over the questions, uh, tell me your answers. And Forrest says, well, the first one, which two days begin with the letter T? Shuts. That's an easy one. That, that'd be today and tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> and the saint's eyes open wide, and he exclaims, Forrest, that's not what I was thinking, but you do have a point, and I guess I did specify, so I'll give you credit for that answer. How about the next one, asks St. Peter. How many seconds in a year? Now that one's harder, says Forrest. But I thunk, and I thunk about that, and I guess the only answer can be 12. And astonished St. Peter says, 12? 12? Forrest, how in heaven's name could you come up with 12 seconds in a year? And Forrest says, shucks, that's, it's got to be 12. Ja or, yeah, January 2nd, February 2nd, March 2nd. Hold it, interrupts St. Peter. I see where you're going with this, and I see your point, though that wasn't quite what I had in mind. But I'll have to give you credit for that one, too. All right, let's go on with the third question, third and final question. Can you tell me God's first name? Sure, Forrest replied, it's Andy. Andy, exclaimed the exasperated, frustrated St. Peter. Okay, I can understand how you came up with your answers to my first two questions, but just how in the world did you come up with the name Andy for the first name of God? Shucks, that was the easiest one of all, Forrest replied. I learned it from the song. Andy walks with me, Andy talks with me, and he tells me I am his own. <laughs> St. Peter opened the gates and said, Run, Forrest, run! <laughs> Very good. Um, I, I wanted to share that with you because we do have this this image in the back of our heads of St. Peter standing at the gates deciding whether you can come into heaven or not. And yet, in our scripture lesson today, we discover that the good news is, it's not St. Peter deciding whether or not we get to come into heaven. And it's not our own actions that decide whether or not we get to come into heaven. It's God's forgiveness of us. Jesus went on to say to the disciples, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. And it seems kind of strange that Jesus would go from, you know, peace be with you, you don't have to be afraid of the, of the uh, Jewish officials, to talking about forgiveness. But there's something else that the uh, disciples might have been afraid of. 
And that was seeing Jesus himself. Because remember, during the, uh, his final meal with them, the disciples all said, Oh, we will stand with you no matter what. We are we even willing to die for you. But then one of them betrays Jesus. Uh, when the, Jesus is arrested, the other disciples run away and abandon him. And Peter even denies knowing him in order to save his own life. They had turned their backs on Jesus. And now Jesus was raised from the dead. What was he going to do to them? Would he turn his backs on them? And so Jesus, coming into the room and being present with them and talking to them about forgiveness, is indicating that Jesus himself forgives them. Now forgiveness is not simply saying to somebody, oh, don't worry about it, it doesn't matter what you did. Or even, oh, forget about it, I don't, I don't want to remember it. Forgiveness is admitting the other person has hurt you, and acknowledging that hurt, and yet saying, my relationship with you is more important than that hurt. And so I am letting go of the hurt, and I am letting go of my right to get even with you, and I am choosing to heal the relationship between us. I am letting go of the past so that we can have a future together. Jesus did that for his disciples. Jesus does that for us. God forgives the hurts that we have committed against him and against one another and even against our world in order to let go of the past so that we can live into a new future, a relationship with God and with one another and with our world that is healed. And Jesus invites the disciples, and he invites us to do the same. To be willing to forgive others uh, their hurts against us, so that we can repair our relationship, and we can move forward into the future together. And so that's the uh, second piece of our um, story here, uh, is Forrest Gump. And then we come to our third piece of the story, and that is uh, Doubting Thomas. And I got a picture here that says, Hey Thomas, do you think Christians will ever appreciate that you are actually a person of great faith? And he says, I doubt it. Mm. Bum, bum, bum. There we go. <laughs> that, that, was, that was appropriate. Um, in this uh, scripture that I read today, the uh, character of Thomas is engraved in our minds. We always think of doubting Thomas. Because Thomas wasn't there the first Sunday when Jesus appeared. And so when he does come back, the disciples say, we have seen the Lord. And Thomas says, I want to see it for myself before I believe. And so we always refer to him as Doubting Thomas. And we know the story. Jesus comes back. He, he appears to Thomas. He invites Thomas to touch him, to see that he's real, to see that the wounds are real. And Thomas then believes. What we don't realize is that Thomas makes one one of the greatest statements of faith in the Bible. Yes, when Peter was asked, who do you say that I am? Peter said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. But Thomas goes a step further. And he says, you are my Lord and my God. In the Gospel of John, we are introduced with the statement, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. What does it mean to say Jesus is um, God. And you follow the story through the Gospel of John and you find that that definition grows and grows until we get to Thomas's confession. You are God. You are God with us. And that was a great statement of faith. But how did he come to that statement of faith? Notice that the disciples, when Thomas says, I, I want to see it for myself, I'm not going to believe it until I see it, the disciples don't ridicule him. They don't make fun of him. They don't ostracize him or cast them out of their group and say only people of faith can be in our group. He is welcome to be with them. They make space in their uh, little group for somebody who doubts, who doesn't believe. For somebody who has questions and wants those questions answered. And because they were willing to make space for Thomas and for his doubts and for his questions, he was able to have an encounter with Jesus Christ that transformed his life, that answered his questions, that brought him to the point where he could say, 
I too believe you are God. And that is what Jesus is calling us to do. To be a community of faith that doesn't uh, only focus on those who have powerful faith and strength, that also makes space and allows for people to have their doubts and to ask their questions. Because when we become that community where everyone is welcome, even with their doubts and questions, then people can have an encounter with Jesus Christ that transforms their lives, that answers their questions, that helps them build their faith. And if you uh, have been paying attention, uh, this uh, story really hasn't been about pieces of pie or even different characters in the story. This has been about the different ways, get this, that God has given us peace in our lives. Uh, one, we don't have to be afraid of the future. The God who raised Jesus from the dead is the God who is at work in our lives, we can have, we can live our lives each day in peace. We also don't have to be afraid of God's uh, judgment. God promises to forgive us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And so again, we can live our lives in peace. And God, we don't have to be afraid of doubting God or having questions about God. God accepts our doubts and our questions and will meet with us and will continue to work in our lives until those doubts and questions are gone and we have peace in our hearts. So let us um, give thanks to God for the resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ and for the peace that He brings to us.
up. It's a shame Angela isn't here because I think we set a new record for collecting clipboard information. She'd be so, she'd be so proud. Uh, and normally, when we get over 40, we got guests here. Mm -hmm. This is all part of our little core group of 58 or so today, which is an unusual thing for us. We had 41. Oh. 41. That was very good. Well, okay. How about we uh, compromise here? We'll sing our praise song through once to celebrate that, and then we'll close with our benediction. Fellowship of the Holy Spirit, descend upon you all and be with you all, now and forevermore.